Hi. This meeting is being recorded. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Turf Talk Down Under. I'm Angie, and this is Kellyanne Chaos. Hi, Kellyanne. Hi, how are you, Angie? Good, good. Um, thanks for helping me out with this news episode. There's been lots happening this week. Certainly has. Um, Queensland mm. has been crazy. Mm. Because you had um, the submissions for the uh, self-ID bill have closed and they released to the public with, you know, identifiers redacted some of the submissions and there were some very, very interesting ones. There there certainly was. There certainly was. um, I read one that was floating around like I'm guilty. I wasn't one of the people that got on and read every submission. I know some ladies um, were found that very interesting. But um, there was one by a self-aware ornithophile, and that was floating Trans-cat. around. Yeah, and, and um, I found that um, absolutely fantastic to, to read and um, to to get a, a different perspective too on somebody who under- who's aware and understands why he shouldn't be in women's spaces. He um, is a viewer of this channel. So, Transcat, if you're out there, thank you very, very much for your very honest submission. Very much appreciated. It had so much pet feedback about that. Um, yeah, and there was, I've read some of the submissions from the usual suspects um, in the trans rights activist community, full of um, hyperbole and, um, you know, the usual rubbish. And I read some of the quite heartbreaking submissions from people. Um, who opposed the bill um, about how this will impact on women and children and um, same-sex attracted people's rights. So, yeah, it was, it was interesting. I, I too didn't read all of them. I found it quite heavy going. Um, yeah, but I, I'm just so grateful to everybody who did make a submission. I think it's so important. And yeah, you yeah, said something... Um, um, yeah. So, right. yeah, one of the um, ladies that I know here, she um, did a bit of a head count and she said, um, it seemed to be a 60-40 split and there was two that weren't really for or against. She's just threw out. But she said it seemed like there was 60 against the self-sex and 44 in what, in what the tally that she did. And I was sort of blown away by that considering, you know, we've got the hearings coming up and those who they've selected for the actual hearings itself. And have they selected an equal number of people from both sides for the hearings? No, it doesn't seem to look like they have. Um, it looks like that they've chosen three for, um, you know, not agreeing with the bill. And it looks like they've chosen seven that actually agree with the self-sex. So the, it doesn't at all seem to me, from what I understand, that there's a balance representing the submission letters in regard to a balance of who's actually getting up in the hearing i didn't get a letter and i'm a very disappointed um turf um maybe it's because they've seen the channel and know that i don't mind my um my f-bombs on occasion so maybe i just don't (laughs) if i too am a bit too controversial for the mainstream so yeah be proud so so maybe yeah maybe um I might not be able to um, control my, my f bomb, so it might be a better thing that, that I don't speak this time. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, I hope. Um, are they going to be televising these submissions? or? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I believe they do. They will be um, televising them. So um, I think maybe for us louder people who maybe can't control their um, over enthusiasm. Um, being at home watching it and yelling at the TV may be a better option than going in and interrupting the um, speakers. Yeah, I, I've, I've heard um, Rachel Wong from uh, Women's Forum Australia has been invited to uh, read her submission, which will be really good. Yes. Uh, she's a wonderful, wonderful articulate speaker. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing it. But, you know, what happened in Victoria is that, um, you know, it was already decided before any submissions were made that this bill was going to go straight through. It, you know, it was a token gesture to even invite the submissions. So, however, um, with the sentiment of what's happening in Scotland, I've had people say to me recently, oh, isn't it awful what's happened in Scotland, how they're trying to take women's rights away? 
because they know I'm a TERF. And I'm like, well, are you aware that the, those laws already apply in Victoria mm-hmm. and they're just about to come in in Queensland and their jaw hits the floor? And, you know, uh, I think the timing of this bill uh, and the UK and Scotland reaching peak trans at the same time as the Queensland bill, oh, you know, you can't say that the Queensland government does not know that momentum is shifting away from self-ID and from the affirmation model for children. I totally it's agree. All media overseas. Our media is being completely silent and is only promoting this now outdated model of, um, you know, transgenderism. But overseas, they're waking up. So I think it's only a matter of time until people really wake up and there's some real resistance to these self-ID bills. Well, I mean, it's great. I got to peek my neighbour the other day um, mm-hmm. and I was able to use, you know, look what's going on in Scotland and mm-hmm. are you aware? And she's like, because they don't have any idea, but she's like, well, I, I've not heard anything about this on the, the, the news, you know, and mm-hmm. um, she's, you know, by the end of it, she's sort of like, you know, thank you. I like, just remember, someone like my son will be in your spaces. Mm. They, they honestly don't realise that the mainstream news is keeping it from everybody because if they haven't seen it on the news, they don't realise that, that it's happened. And people discover that self-ID when it impacts on them. And now that that tiny minority of people who have a trans identity is vastly growing, more and more people are being impacted by men in women-only spaces or females in male-only spaces, and they're going, oh, my God, what's happening, and reporting it, and they're being told, oh, no, we can't do anything about it. And that's how they out about self-id that's you know it. and nobody's nobody nobody will mo- well, most people don't have the resources to take it any further and maybe um you know fight it legally and say you know i want to prove that sex is still protected blah 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 and that's why all of these um you know female only services have all caved because the cost of defending sex-based spaces is so high and you lose your funding because all the all the the government and all the funding orgs are captured so oh it's awful it it becomes like a a social paradox doesn't it yeah the bill will go through and then you know we'll just fight harder bringing it back but um interesting times the greens in queensland are having a meltdown at the moment because of kelly j's upcoming tour (laughs) and um yeah an mp called stephen bates look him up on uh on twitter an mp called stephen bates has made written a letter to the minister for immigration to try and get kelly j banned from entering the country and on it he has written the biggest pile of lies I've ever seen, like lies about her links to white supremacy and arms dealers and all sorts of ridiculous defamatory lies. And I'm just praying that she sues the prick. I I hope so too, yes. And all these other Greens misogynists have jumped in, you know, saying, oh, there's no room for far-right transphobic bigots here and calling, you know, women, left-wing women like myself you know, uh, far-right bigots all over Twitter and dragging any resistors, you know, through the mud. And these are all members of the Greens and some of them are MPs who've been elected to either local government or state government by the Greens. And it's just disgusting. And, you know, the same party who has, you know, people with strong links to very nefarious activities and they're kind of not focusing Mm. on them, they're focusing on women trying to protect their sex-based rights and spaces. It's despicable. I've got a cat here. I'm not losing my mind. Um, just <laughs> my arm around. Um, yeah. So I had to leave the door open because of my appalling Wi-Fi. So all the animals and kids and everyone's going to come in. So it might be interesting. Um, the NBN's told me that I have to get a two-metre tower on my roof. And um, they said, oh, you know, most people don't like it because of the look of it. And I said, I want a 20-metre tower. I want to have, like, the local Eiffel Tower of NBN on my roof because I'm tired of my choppy YouTube, you know? So, just, yeah, just, just, put your, just, just put your 5G right there in the neighbourhood. We're good. Thank you. Yeah. 
So um, myself and a few of the other women are making formal complaints about some of the behaviour of some of these Greens councillors and some of these local government, um, you know, councillors. Uh, yeah, so, you know, if you want to get involved in that, you can hop on Twitter and we've got some links and things because, you know, uh, we are we are piled upon. Most of us are not trolls. We talk about um, topics that are related to women. We post news articles and things like that. We're not going around calling people names. We're not even mentioning trans-identified people. We're usually mentioning men, and we don't want men in our spaces, right? And for That's that, exactly. we get we get abuse, like abuse. And I think a person should not be abused because they know that sex is real. Because that's all it comes down to. And if an elected public official is piling abuse on someone of the opposite sex, but a woman, because she knows a man is not a woman, that's not acceptable. No, it's, it's, not. it's not. Yeah, because I'm. it's like saying I'm going to pile it on you because you're not a Scientologist. That's right. You know? Mm. That, that's or a Mormon. A, or... It's... Um, it... And that it comes down straight up to truth. They do not want us to speak truth about reality, to be able to name reality. Yeah. Speaking of reality, the UK census had some interesting results regarding um, trans identifying people. And this is what they described it as hard uh, evidence. Um, apparently, trans identifying men are five times more likely than non trans identifying men to commit a sexual offence. They are also 566 times more likely than a woman to commit a sexual offence. Now, many governments, even those who haven't yet put self-ID into place, are putting trans-identified men in women's prisons, mm. in women's domestic violence services, in women's rape crisis centres, with statistics like that. So now they come, come back at us and say, no, this never happens. This is UK official statistics from their census. So there you go. Um, in some good news, uh, Jacinda Ardern, the woman who sold out women in New Zealand, is leaving. Adios. Um, goodbye. And don't let the friggin' door hit you on the way out. Yeah, that's very good news. And um, I, I was I was watching Posey, um, Kelly J, and she said maybe, just maybe, the, the tour scared her off. <laughs> oh, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> We've been coming out on force and um, she just couldn't handle the heat and um, she's out of there. I was so excited when she got in and when Daniel Andrews got in because, you know, I considered myself a progressive and my, I'm so deeply disappointed in these people, um, you know, that they've capitulated to this ideology because of money, because that's the only reason. And one of the things that I hope happens is, you know, that eventually these political parties get investigated and we yeah. find out where the money's coming from that is funding this mutilating, rights-denying, abusive ideology that has taken over all our institutions like yeah. I'm really hoping that maybe if Ardern's getting the boot because there's a, some talk about some of her you know taking money from places she shouldn't be I'm hoping yeah. some of the links to the gender org comes out in that well you know what they say with rats on a pirate ship when the ship's going down they, they scatter that's yeah. right that's right they go before anything else does Oh, it always hurts that little bit more when it's a woman who sells us out. You know, someone like Shannon Phantom, or doesn't you know, it? Or even or Nicholas Sturgeon, like these women, because you know they know it's bullshit. They and have you to. Know that yeah, and they're condemning poor and working class women to abuses that they will never experience. It's just infuriating. Absolutely infuriating. Oh, that's it. That's um, it. You know, well, you know, Kelly J is coming out. And I'm, there is. Are you sorry. excited? Are you excited? I'm, I'm pretty excited. I'm, I'm rather excited. I'm, yes, I am rather excited. And just in time, Victoria Police have released uh, a new crackdown on hate speech. <laughs> yeah, of course they have. And there was an article. Yeah, there was a there was an article on Channel Ten talking about cracking down on hate speech online. And doing what they do like in the UK where they go around and knock on your door and go, excuse me, madam, did you post this comment? So yes. I expect that that will be 
both a godsend because of all the abuse that does occur online it'll be beneficial but i think it will be abused because gender identity is one of the things that they've spoken about and i think you know vexatious trans identified men who don't like being called men are going to um tie women up in in legislation and try out police resources that can't afford to be tied up in following up on these ridiculous things she called me a, a man you know crazy i think so too and i think it, it can be um quite it's going to be quite scary and frightening because it's not going to work both ways um mm. we're going to see one lot of people really abusing the system while actually verbally using the system to attack attack women which is going to be um really unfortunate and um i've seen a bit of that myself and witnessed a bit of that as as the observer, I like to be on Twitter sometimes. I sometimes don't like to, to make a comment, but I do like to read. And, and you see, um, yeah, the pileup's pretty hor horrendous over there sometimes. That's a cesspit. It's an absolute cesspit. But for women who have no voice like I didn't, it was one way that I could make my voice heard. That's the only yeah. reason I use it. Yeah, I'm fairly new no to other, it. Yeah, I had no other way of anyone listening to a word I said. And as someone someone who advocates for women you know who who like well because you know, I, I put it on a petition today that um my my friend and i were going to have um we run a, a a domestic violence service for for support for women who are mothers and you know for someone like me to be able to have a voice to represent those women those women yeah. who are going through the worst times in their life then yeah. Twitter is a good thing because nobody's can build a profile there um, because the mainstream media isn't listening. And it was self-ID uh, that motivated me to, to get involved in Twitter and to become politically active because I'm, I'm frightened. I'm frightened for my kids and I'm frightened for every vulnerable woman that I know. Absolutely, absolutely. And I hadn't thought about doing the Twitter thing, um, but I, I, I'm, a, I'm a YouTube stalker. I've been over doing the GC thing on YouTube for, for eight years and um, Channel 4 for over a year now. I couldn't believe I had my little anniversary on the channel. Um, but over on Twitter, so many stories, so many things that you would miss if you if you weren't on there. And it is a really, really, I mean, yeah, it's not nice to see some of the fighting and, and what's going on over there, but as a resource for knowledge and seeing, even seeing the Ornogodophile pictures, you know, you wouldn't see mm. them. They, they, they put them up themselves to share. So, you know, that's a bonus, isn't it? I asked um, Skirt Go Spinny to come on this channel and they, they are anonymous at the moment, but um, if that changes, they said they come on. So that'd be oh, exciting. I'm excited. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, let's, 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 Skirt Go Spinny, have a look on YouTube. It's basically a collection of AGP picks and um, that person has a very strong stomach. It'd be lovely to talk to them. Yeah, I think so too. That's the, definitely a test book I'll be um, sitting down to watch. So oh, see, see. My, see my Kelly J, my, my door in the background here. Yeah, and I like, saw Magdalene there. Yes, Magdalene, and I've got, um, I've got um, J.K. Rowling's up the top. Now, if hate speech is a thing and they can come in to take, you know, say that um, if we are Nazis, wouldn't my Kelly J. Daw be equivalent to the swap sticker? Yeah. Did you see that, uh, that Australian doctor who... Because there's a legend at the ABC. I don't know what what one of their publications was. I think it was a staff publication or something like that. Someone who works at the ABC um, did a crossword. And one of the clues was adult human female. And some medical doctor hopped on Twitter and said, how dare you, ABC, do this transphobic dog whistle, right? Yeah. And everyone's hopping on there. And I... I I showed her a picture of a book that I've got called Sex Matters and Why Sex is Important in Medicine or something like that. But, um, you know, so many people hopped on there to say to this woman, you're a medical doctor? And, was, you, you know, you don't know what a woman is, you know? <laughs> Crazy. That was, um, that was actually a really good read, I must say. I, I quite enjoyed um, my, my little popcorn having because you, you can't make it up, can you, that, that, that clue in a crossword is now triggering an offensive. 
Yeah, it's, an, it's offensive to call yourself the dictionary definition of a woman. Well done to Posey, I reckon. Well done, that, Kelly J. That's a, totally, totally. And that's why I love, I love my Posey here because it's, a, it's a, a traditional little standing back in front of the billboard that she did. Can't believe, yeah, like, you know, a medical doctor. That really frightens me. You know, like the, uh, so many of the people on Twitter, um, obviously because of, you know, their, their doctors, their lawyers, they're people of influ that have quite an influence, mm -hmm. but they're also people who are never going to be impacted by self-ID. Yeah. You know, personally, personally impacted. Like, you know, of course, they'll have to use pronouns and whatever, but they're not going to be, you know, the, the they're not going to be the patient in hospital who is stuck next to a creepy trans woman or, you know, having a trans identifying mm -hmm. doctor being creepy or, you know. And I'm not saying all trans identifying men are creepy, but most of them are because most of them are already gone. So, um, yeah, That's so that, right. yeah, she was hilarious, that character. She was quite funny. Um, what else have I got? Oh, there was a quite a good news article in the in the Australian this week um, by a lady called uh, Lydia Lynch. So a new name. And um, it was about the self-ID bill and that some lawyers have identified, you know, that the, the specifically the Queensland bill, that some things that are going to cause problems legally within yes. the bill. So that was interesting. That was in the Australian. Yeah, and, and that was good um, too. Else? Yeah. Um, how the Brit Awards? Did everyone <laughs> see the thing about the Brit Awards? That's hilarious because you know a couple of years ago, Sam. And so instead of having male and female categories, they had, you know, best artist. And last year Adele won it because there was a mix of male and female nominees. But everybody said when they said they, that they're going to remove the sexed categories, that it's going to be overrun with men. And guess what? This year, every nominee is a bloke. We're here. We're here. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. We've just regressed, you know, right back into Shakespearean times now, haven't we? You know, when women aren't allowed to entertain. Thanks. Thanks for that. But it's wonderful peak trans material. That's the great the thing about it, because the average person's going to go, that's not right. That shouldn't happen. That's right. That's it. So we've got, yeah. you know, men winning for, um, the, the fashion awards, like um, the, um, you know, like Brian Ewan sort of type of thing we've got that and now you know so it is it's literally women are losing these the the, the awards left right and center aren't they like you're not even going to be nominated can, for it in the first place yeah they can have miss universe because apparently didn't some trans woman win it or buy it or something like that they can have the beauty pageants yes, the trans yes. women, they can have the pornography they can have all of those things but you know um artists deserve to be recognized for their work and as you know yes. male artists are generally more popular because think of who buys the most records it's usually young women who yes. you know buy Harry Styles records or Taylor Swift or Taylor Swift's one of them but you know like it's young women who are your your people that purchase most of these things and so yeah more men are represented than women and so you know, we knew it was going to go this way. It reminds um, me of um, the old Sinead O'Connor back in the day, you know, having to shave her head to yeah. be taken more seriously yeah. as a recording artist. And now she wouldn't even be nominated for, for that fantastic piece that she did back in the day, you know. So we've come sort of again full circle. And how good did she look with a shaved head, though, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, no. Yeah, I'd look like a potato if I shaved my head. Um, but if I look like that, I'd have a shaved head too. I think it would be far easier than having hair. Um, what else have we got? My my eyes get... Oh, Gardening Australia's in trouble. I don't know what they did, but apparently they've been um, transphobic as well. Um, Gardening, Gardening Australia. Australia. So washed mostly by older people who, you know, do gardening in their, in their retirement. Like, oh, for God's sake um you know it's just getting crazy but um what other specific australia specific news have we got i'm trying to think there's been so much um most of the energy has been taken by the queensland self-id bill and also this you know hate campaign that has already begun two months two nearly yes. three months out from kelly j's tour where people are trying to paint anyone who has any uh you know conflict with trans rights what the indefinable trans right trying to paint us all as nazi bigots and these these campaigns are led by young men 
young men. So yes. they're already, you know, trying to trying to make, you know, they're trying to incite hate and violence, but they're also trying to terrify anyone who might be tempted to find out what Kelly J is all about. That's right. And um, any woman that may not, um, you know, have an experienced a, a rally or experienced mm -hmm. one of these gatherings of, of the turban, um, may not want to come out because they may feel a little bit, ooh. Um, but, you know, I, I personally wouldn't want that. I, I want to see as many, many Aussies as, as possible and, and reach out, you know. Like if you see, um, if you see Turvin that, that you think are approachable, reach out to them and, and if you're coming up, you know, um, that way it makes it easier. Say if you're coming up from Lismore to Brisbane, reach out to somebody that you know in Brisbane and and just so that you can meet up. So you're not having to worry about already coming up here by yourself and having to introduce yourself. So we've got like, what, six months, uh, six weeks? Six months, I wish. Uh, six weeks or so to, to get this. So um, I'm hoping to come to Melbourne. Ah, so I'm excited. So um, I've done that, as you know, I've reached out some to some Melbourne people, so that um, to Melbourne turf, so that I not going to feel so lonely when I crash into Melbourne. So yeah, no, it's um, and you know, Standing for Women's a very professional organisation. They've been doing this for a long time, so it's not just a bunch of women showing up. Like there's security, um, you know, both visible, not visible. Like their police have in have been, you know, uh, well prepared for any interlopers you know it will be a safe environment there are lots of marshals that will be yes, easily yes. identified you know um it will be a safe place and we've had other protests in melbourne where women have come in disguised you know a pair of sunnies and a baseball cap you know a if you be recognized perfect a you know mask. um and what I found with trans activists, if they've got a couple of faces that they are, are, can identify, they focus on the, the faces that they recognise. Like they'll focus yeah. on Kath Deves, they'll probably focus on you and me, you know, because we have a public profile. So they're not really interested in who the people are that attend a rally. So if there's 100 women there and they've got two to scream at, they're going to choose them rather than the other 98. <laughs> that, that, that's true. That, that, that is a, that's a fact, yeah. you know, and we and have seen that. actually love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've seen that in yeah. America, haven't we, with um, KJ and Amy um, Heretic, you know, how um, they are literally, because they have a public face, they are sort of zoned in on, which, is, which isn't a yeah. bad thing, you know. Like, um, I suppose some of us can take a little bit more than others. <laughs> Well, my um, my my bodyguard and turf, I won't be able to make it to this event, so I hope I'm safe. You know, everybody knows my bodyguard, and um, yes, so I'll have to find myself another bodyguard. Yes, <laughs> Hi, yes. Well, I hope you're watching. I love you, Antifa. Um, yeah, well, so, I'll be there, so I'll be watching you back. It'll be great. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting, like because I, I you know, some of my friends, you know, sort of uh. They don't want. They think that this publicity is bad publicity, and I'm sort of at the point in this fight, which I've been fighting since my father-in-law came out in 2014, 2014. But you know, and I, I accidentally stumbled upon um, Bronwyn Winter on online um, speaking openly about this issue, and then you know began publicly turfing and got kicked out of a whole bunch of you know uh like left-wing groups probably three four years ago now um but yeah you know what's I gonna say <laughs> but but um yeah I think we've been going around in circles in this country um all the other countries have peaked we haven't um we we have the most draconian laws we yeah. have the most abusive towards children um yeah. affirmation only legislation um it is just horrific and we have tried asking nicely. We've tried, you know, I talk to the left wing media. I talk to them. They are in my inbox and I, they are asking me questions about things and I'm answering them honestly or I'm passing them on to the person who can answer their questions. Yeah. A lot, I see my role not as, um, you know, I see my role as a facilitator where someone will contact me because I have a public profile and I put them in, in contact with the person that they really need to talk to, right? And, and that's that a wonderful, a really wonderful 
talented, knowledgeable people in this country, women in this country, that you can you can go and get, you know, it's it is really good. Yep. And so what I find is that then what happens is they take their work back to their editors and their editors go, no. And what we saw the other day was a man, pub, uh, one of the sub-editors at the Sydney Morning Herald, I think it was, posted this friggin' article, in from. they put it on Twitter as well, telling men why they should use pronouns. And it was the most patronising, passive-aggressive, woke, pathetic thing I've ever read. And it was a sub-editor of a major newspaper and it told all the lies about sex and gender and made people who believe in reality sound, you know, like heretics. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, and so now we really know what we're up against. We're up, up against these ideologically captured editors. So the yeah. journalists, the journalists have got to look overseas and they've got to see what's happening over there and they've got to say, okay, this is going to break. Am I brave enough for the one to be the one who breaks ranks? Am I is brave it? enough? And it has to come from the left because people in conservative newspapers, some of whom the journalists themselves are on the left, but they write for conservative the conservative press because they're the only ones who write on this shit. They've been talking for a long time, but until the left press breaks the mould, you know, do you want to be a sheep? Or do you want to make your journalistic career by being the journalist who breaks the mould? Have a think about it, or you journos that watch this dodgy channel, have a freaking think about it. Absolutely. You know, it's um, one's bravery is contagious too. You know, bravery yep. is contagious. Stand up and, you know, you'll find that you, you'll have support and people will have your back. You well, know, I've noticed the screens. Have you noticed all the Greens standing up going, especially women, but a whole bunch of the Greens are going, no, nah, we think, you know, we don't agree with this gender bullshit. It's been great. They're slowly rising up, rising up. That's it. That's it. And the more people sort of go, wait a minute, hey, the more people join it. And, you know, it, it's building slowly, but I, I see it is building, you know, I definitely feel, you know. And and I reckon Kelly J. Key, I reckon she brings, bring it, bring it completely. I do too. And I think any publicity at this point is, is good publicity. And what's going to happen is people are going to go, oh, she's a Nazi bigot, whatever. Oh, I'm going to go and have a look at what she's saying. And they're yeah. going to go, just like they did with J.K. Rowling's essay. Yeah. They're going to do exactly the same thing. Exactly. And because Kelly Day is engaging and she's, um, she's accessible. She's accessible yeah. as well. She's going to break through the bullshit because that's the thing. We, we're all just here going, yeah, we'll talk to you. We'll, um, you know, we'll debate you. We'll, you know, we're accessible. And the other side isn't. They are the fascists. They are one policing what you can say, think, who you can talk to, that if you fall outside the ideological points, then you're out. They That's are the fascists. And, you know, I, I was actually reflecting on, um, I don't know your vintage as my, um, compared to mine, but as the, the um, 40, 46, and we are the lunch, last frontier to um, keep this a bay to the young women because the young women have not gotten to this age, this stage yet. And I think that's one thing um, Kelly J brings to the table too, is that she is a woman of a certain age and a mother and that that experience is something that that is unusual this time, you know. I think this time around too, compared to other times, women have stepped forward to push back on ideology. Is that we can actually involve the mothers through Twitter, through social media. Um, those who have got older children can come and and stand up and have a say. Even those who who don't have older children yet, but mums are on the board. I think it's a different well, game. We were talking this at, at, talking about this at the pub last night because I met up with a whole bunch of um, turfs in the city, which was fantastic, and had a beautiful vegan palmer. Oh, my God. Um, and we were talking about that, that, you know, in some ways, and I don't know, obviously it wasn't intentional, but, you know, that, that sort of left-wing feminist has kind of left mothers behind. You know, and certain, yeah. you know, they've almost mocked becoming a mother. And then they've, on the right, 
you know, your mother is uh, motherhood's only valued in relation to the father, really. Yes. You know, and we're finding mm. that you know any progress that women are making, like, oh yeah, we got we got um, parental leave now. We don't have maternity leave. We only have parental leave because guess who can take six months off? It was just us women, tough titties. You know. Gotcha. So uh, you know, if if we can have a center, if we can have a feminism that center that, that not centers mothers but includes mothers because mothers the role of motherhood in this society is so undervalued and even more so if you're a single mother I'm a single mother but you know it is so undervalued by our society and the young leftists it's like your career comes first and they haven't had kids yet so they don't realize that the career you thought meant everything to you suddenly means nothing because you've got children they haven't had that <laughs> Because I was never having kids and I've got four of the little buggers. So, you know, but if we, <laughs> they, we can have, have a, 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 you know, we can include everybody, the, the, the lesbian separatists over here, the, you know, the mums in the middle and some of the little bit conservative on that side, you know, in, in, in a branch of, it's still feminism. Yes. And I must say, it's, like, um, I've been able to have some amazing online friendships with some amazing um, lesbian women in, in America, one in particular. Um, I, I just adore, I adore her. Like I see her as a sister and she's, she's in a completely different country, you know, but I'm learning from her because I'm getting to understand things that um, I wouldn't normally understand. Mm. We all learn from each other, don't we? I've got a few young friends now that I, you know, I kind of, you know, I've got kids the same age as some of my friends, as some of these women that I've met through turfing, and I'm like, how have I got friends in my twenties? But we we have more in common than we have in our differences. The same with my older friends. I've got quite a lot of friends who are 10, 20 years older than me, because what we have in common is that we are women. Yes. And yes. that's that's all it takes. That's it. That's you know? it. That's and yet. There is a time and a place where we need the, the more, um, you know, more academic feminism. That, that is in, crucially important in making legislation and standing up to legislation and all of that stuff. And, you know, but we, we just need the women, the everyday women to get behind this because this is who it's going to impact the most. Self-ID is impacting everyday women the most. We, we, need, we really need those numbers on the streets now, ladies. We, we really need... Um, we're here you're not standing alone yeah. so you so say come out yeah. um we've so, got a local little shelter here and i i feel for those older ladies down at the shelter because if an older man now ids as a woman that's um for homeless people and and that type of thing and they they can go in and shower with those ladies you know and I, that's just a couple of streets down from me and i find that really horrendous you know i, think so. I just you know um I, I, I'm going to be bold and I think really us, um, us bitches in the ditches will be the ones to win it when we, we get, we rise up because we've got the numbers, you know, and um, I, I would really love to see more and more of us Aussie turfs mm. doing anything, channels, twittering, anything, anything you can do, anything, painting rocks. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen there's a whole heap of chalking and painting rocks going around? I think there's some pretty active turfs out there. See, that's it. We've all got our strengths. I know there's that some women have knitted scarves. They've knitted suffragette scarves. And then, you know, um, groups have auctioned the scarves or they've given them as, you know, encouragement to new, me new members of, you know, women's groups. Yeah. And, you know, there's something that everyone can do. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, I, I think... That encouragement of those little things, like like the scarves, and and do you know? I think um, there was a head tilting competition that was a part of you know, you know, because um, the one who had the head tilt is obviously the most womanly of womanly warriors of all. <laughs> you know, we're expect we, the opposition is is going to have the renter crowd of protesters. You know, they're going to have the university students there, so they'll probably have numbers of people. So we want to make sure that you know 
that we have as many women on the streets as we possibly can and male allies as well and curious people that are, you know, that want to just come along and see what it's all about. You know, we want to make sure that there's lots and lots of people there because, it's in it because we don't want to make it less intimidating for people for, for whom this is the first issue that they felt strongly enough to take to the streets. And there are going to be a bunch of 20 year old blue haired people yelling abuse at us. Yeah, Guaranteed, absolutely. There, might be five of them, there might be 500 of them, who knows? But the more women we get out there, the more of a message we send to, to the government and to the media that we are not taking this. We are not going to do this. Absolutely. And you know what I, I reckon? Maybe do a tef, test run with your, if you've got a local couple of um, turfy friends, maybe get them together and have a barbecue and just have a little tone of getting up and, and, and just saying maybe one line, you know, maybe mm -hmm. just getting up and saying lesbians don't have penises and then sitting down again, you know, just as a little barbecue at somebody's, at your, at your mate's place in the backyard. Mm -hmm. And I want to throw out a challenge to the people who are concerned that the, the far-right fascists are going to turn up to Kelly J's event and get a chance to speak, right? Yeah. If you, want, if you don't want people to get on, if you don't want a horrible man to come up to the mic at the end of the day and grab it and stay, start talking frigging horrendous shit, come and speak yourself. If enough yes. women come and they talk, no man will get to speak because That's it's for women. Women come. The only time men get to speak is when all the women have spoken. That's right. So, and if the clock's no. run out, clock's run out. Yep. Sorry, guys. Sorry, you don't get to speak. Yep. You can read a poem. You can do whatever you like. You can get up there and, and do a dance. Um, ah, hey, we'll you dance. dance. You can sing a song. You can <laughs> sing a song interpretive dance you know like you, you know be, be you know make yourself part of it you can't sit there and say oh you know I don't want this to happen I don't want that to happen while you're sitting at home come That's and right. get involved come well, and get as a, involved as, as a belly dancer and a loud person if I had have got my um email to say that I could have done the hearing I think interpretive dance for Sharon Fenterman would have been coming right at her yes Oh, yeah, that would show her what a woman is for sure. Yes, yes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah, no, it's been a bit very big week. Um, at some point I might be having a chat with Sal Grover about what's happening with these um, young blokes in the Greens and, and the campaign of terror that they are trying to get going, um, you know, with Kelly J potentially coming over, you know, trying to get her visa blocked and, and just the horrible things they are just saying to average women and it's completely unprovoked and it's ridiculous. So I might be having a chat with her. Um, next week, we finally got LGB Alliance coming on Turf Talk, which will be nice. And yeah, so they're fun. coming to tell me, um, yeah, tell me all about what they're all about and how people um, can get involved because I've had quite a few people, um, you know, some of my gay friends have contacted me and told me that they've had you know, just icky feeling about all this this um, forced teaming and haven't really quite known what to do about it. And they think that all of these um, supportive organisations are overseas, but we've got our own homegrown one, LGB Alliance Australia. So, yeah, so they'll be with us next week. And, uh, you know, I've got a couple of other interviews on the boil, but I'm, I'm waiting for my two-metre tower. <laughs> when that when that gets installed, then I'm lifting my game. So Kelly, that, I was going to call you Kelly J. Kelly Ann, you Kelly can Ann. come back on. You can come back on when I've got good Wi-Fi and you know my little studio set up. So fingers crossed. NBN. Well, <laughs> your house will look fabulously like a witch's hat, darling, with the, the antenna on top. Yeah, it's black. It looks. It actually looked like um, like a radio station then, because my house is a flat, big flat box, and it's grey colour bond. It looks like a bunker. So if they had a great big tower up the middle, it'd look grey. I could <laughs> pretend that I'm like like sending out all these turf signals all over the place. A bit like yes, you know, yeah, <laughs> love it, oh, love it life but um uh yeah so we better go because we're running out of time and um this thing takes ages to upload it does doesn't it yes it does i can make dinner in that time um and i've got to th think about what i'm having for dinner 
yeah, riveting. So if you've got any suggestions of what I can have for dinner, um, no. <laughs> but um, yeah, we've also um, at some point I'll also point the link, post a link to um, our turf, to, turf Talk Down Under new Patreon, um, and I'll put that on the um, Turf Talk Facebook page too. And I want to say a big huge thank you to the women who post the news articles um, on the Turf Talk Down Under Facebook page fantastic stuff it is such a huge help because I find it very difficult to keep track of the Australian news when there is so little of it, of it and so much of my news feed is news from um, the UK and you know the US so very Absolutely. huge thing it's a great resource yeah. isn't it yeah and they're a great bunch of women too you know I was a bit nervous about having a Facebook group but they're a great bunch of and men too um great bunch of people in there um yeah very very good bunch of um, followers we've got here and yeah and if you could if you could like and subscribe that really helps that when people put the word turf into youtube instead of like hateful videos and horrible you know things that shouldn't even be on youtube like kill turf this channel will come up instead so yeah like subscribe and share pretty please and um we'll catch you all soon thank you so much for watching take care bye see ya bye